Hey everyone, this is Rohan Shaw with BestEconTutor.com and in this video we'll be talking about what monopolistic competition is, the monopolistic competition equilibrium, and what happens in the long run. So let's take a minute to think about the big picture here. There are four types of market setups that we learn about in economics. Perfect competition, which we learned about first. And then we kind of talked about monopolies and oligopolies, and now we're talking about monopolistic competition. So what's the difference between all these, right? So the number of firms in a perfect competition is high, There's many firms. In theory, infinity firms if needed. Same with monopolistic competition. So the competition part that's the same between these two is the fact that there's, you know, many firms. And this is kind of this question kind of goes with this, the barriers to entry. Here, there are no barriers to entry in perfect competition, as we learned. Same with monopolistic competition that we're learning about right now. There are also no barriers to entry, which is why anyone can enter, and that's why there are you know, uh, many firms. Oligopolies, on the other hand, they have high barriers to entry. Same with monopolies. In fact, monopolies, there it's not even applicable because no one else is allowed to enter. And that's why, because there's high barriers to entry, in an oligopoly, there's only few firms. And in a monopoly, there's only one firm. So that's sort of the difference here. Now, this actually kind of also tells us about the long-run profit because there's, you know, many firms, as we learned, and no barrier century in perfect competition, the long run profits are zero because, hey, if you're in a perfectly competitive market and if you're making a profit, some other guy's gonna come in and compete with you and then your profits are gonna go down until it's zero. Same with monopolistic competition, so the competition part, so far these two are the same in that there's no long run profits because there's competition, no, no barrier century, many firms. For these guys, the long run profits, you know, they could be positive, right? They could be greater than or equal to zero. It might just coincidentally be zero. Uh, would never be negative because you know you could always exit and you know you wouldn't make a negative profit in the long run. But you could actually have a positive profit in the long run for either monopolies or oligopolies. Because hey, if you have a profit, hey, uh, nobody's necessarily going to enter and price compete and lower your price. So you could have long run profits there. But the main difference, and what is the difference? If you look at these first two columns, so far they're identical. The difference between perfect and monopolistic competition is that monopolistically competitive firms have some market power. So the market power here, they have no market power, which really is why P equals MR, which means, that, so all these are saying the same thing, no market power, P equals MR always, and that you are a price taker. And uh, this further, this sort of comes because of the fact that here, you have identical products. If you're in a perfectly competitive market selling bananas, every single person has the exact same banana. You can't even tell where it came from. So here, the, the other sort of thing, all this is kind of saying the same thing, identical products. So identical products, your price takers, P equals MR, all that's really pointing at the fact that you have no market power. But with monopolistic competition, you have some market power. And so here you have specialized, you have differentiated products. Differentiated products. And uh, so really for all these, because you know, you're, you know, here you, again, for both these you have a high degree of market power. So really, long story short, for all three of these, your price is above your MR. P is bigger than MR, you're not price takers. That's the mathematical way of saying you're a price setter or a price maker, not a price taker. So these three are price setters. Now, to maximize your profit here, we learned that PS to equal MC, which technically, here you could also, if you wanted to use MR equals MC, because P and MR are the same thing for these guys. But for these guys, you can't use P equal MC because P and MR are not the same thing. So for all three of these, to maximize your profits, you want MR to equal MC. So that is the condition that'll help you maximize your profit. So technically, MR equals MC is a universal condition. No matter who you are, MR equals MC maximizes your profit. 
You could additionally use P equals MC because P and MR are the same thing for perfect competition. So that's why we use P equals MC. But for all these, if you remember with monopolies, MR equals MC. Oligopolies, once you found the strategic demand curve, MR equals MC. And same thing here. So that is the big picture. Now, if we were to think about the graph big picture deadweight loss wise, if we wanted to kind of add a deadweight loss here, there's zero deadweight loss. Here there's high deadweight loss. Here there's, uh, you know, some deadweight loss, and here also there's some deadweight loss. So it's kind of like a spectrum. Here, if we had a perfect competition, you'd produce here where supply and demand intersect. This is a regular curve, right? Now if you're in the same, you know, here's the thing, the demand curve is kind of unaffected based on whether the market has competition or a monopoly or any level of competition. So the demand curve is the same demand curve. The only difference is going to be that if it's perfect competition, this is equilibrium. If it's a monopoly, the other extreme, you're going to find the market's MR, go up to the demand curve, and that is the monopoly. So here's the monopoly, and here's the perfect competition. And since so the monopoly notice has all this deadweight loss. Now, if you're an oligopoly and monopolistic competition, you're kind of somewhere in between. You'll never be asked to find exactly where. But, you know, somewhere in between here, this is an oligopoly. And somewhere even between them, you know, you have a monopolistic competition. So here, which is where we are. So we have some deadweight loss. You know, it's not quite zero deadweight loss, even though we're making no profits in the long run. But it's not as much deadweight loss as these other two cases. So one thing about a monopolistically competitive market is that they have, as we just saw, slightly differentiated products compared to if it was perfect competition. That's why what you usually do if you're in a monopolistically competitive market is you want to spend a lot of money on advertising. Show people that, hey, my bananas are better than you know, some other you know, banana vendors' products. And so that's why you're going to spend a lot of money trying to advertise. So one kind of indication in the real world, if you want to see if something's in a monopolistically competitive market, it's probably because they're advertising more, they're trying to stand out. On the other hand, if you're an oligopoly or a monopoly, you kind of don't, in theory at least, you don't really need to market that much, you know, do a lot of marketing because, hey, people already kind of uh, have no other choice, you know, or very limited choices at least. So here, that's uh, one thing. So your product differentiation is what makes you have that market power. So that's sort of a key aspect in the real world if you want to try to distinguish between those. So suppose you're in a monopolistically competitive market and you have your demand and your supply curve, your MC curve. Well, the way to find your point of production is actually the same as any other monopoly or even oligopoly where you first want to find your MR curve. Again, not the markets, but just this is your demand curve, not the whole market. It's just you uh, for your specialized product, right? So you find your MR curve, find where your MR equals MC. So it's technically the same rule. The only difference then is in the long run. So this is what the price is going to be. Now, to think about what happens to the long run, and you know, uh, you kind of have to look at the long run average total cost curve. Because remember, the formula for profits is, you know, quantity times P minus ATC. So, if you recall, with perfect competition, what happened was, you know, we went all the way. Our our price was all our demand for an individual firm was always horizontal. And as people kept entering when we had positive profits, our, the price kept going down until we were sort of at the minimum of the longer in ATC. But either way, P equals ATC in that case, and so that's why your profits were zero. Basically, if it costs you, you know, 40 cents to produce your item and you're selling it for a price of 40 cents, you're making zero profit. Your price equals your average total cost in the long run. And that's actually true not just for perfect competition, but also for monopolistic competition because what happens is, if you're somewhere here, let's say you're making a profit. You know, let's say your demand curve looks like this, right? And let's say you're, you know, producing some quantity. Let's say you're producing this quantity and, you know, you're setting, again, the price that you charge is always on your demand curve. So if you're selling it at this price at that quantity, if you think about it, hey, you're making this, this much profits, right? Because, hey, that's your price, that's your ATC at that quantity level, so you have some profits. So what's going to happen is, other people are going to now enter. They're going to say, hey, this guy's Chinese restaurant's making profits. I'm going to open up my own Chinese restaurant. And what that's going to do is that's going to lower your demand. So your demand shifts left. And now your profits get lowered because the gap gets slower. In fact, that keeps happening until your demand and your ATC are kind of tangent to each other. And now, it turns out, just to sort of draw it separately, you're, you're in the long run. But if that's your ATC curve, that's your demand. So you're not quite at the minimum of the ATC, but you're at a point where you're producing at a quantity 
where, oh, your price that you're charging equals your ATC. They're both, they both have the same Y value. So if your price equals your ATC, you have zero long run profits. So here's the ironic, kind of also sad part, that if you're in a monopolistically competitive firm, in the long run, you're making zero profits. Same as with perfect competition. Yet, there's actually some inefficiency here. It's called excess capacity. Long story short, we could be at this minimum ATC point, producing this high quantity, but instead, as we said, you know, you're sort of tangent somewhere before that minimum. So here, this is a quantity that perfect competition would have produced. This is a quantity that monopolistic competition produces. So that gap, the how much fewer quantity you're producing compared to if you were perfect competition, notice you'd even charge a lower price in the long run if you were in perfect competition compared to here, because your long run price is over here, but in perfect competition, the long run price is always the minimum of the ATC, if you recall. So that's why it's kind of sad that, you know, uh, the customers have to pay a little bit more, they get a less quantity, there's excess capacity, meaning you have the capacity to do more. That's really, you know, deadweight loss really here. So there is deadweight loss in long run for the monopolistic competition. Yet, see with monopolies, there's deadweight loss, but they're, they're also making a profit in the long run. Same with oligopolies. Here, there's deadweight loss, but you know, you're not even getting a benefit out of it. You still have zero long run profits. So that's what the equilibrium is for monopolistic competitions in the long run. Now let's look at a couple student questions. Question one, is monopolistic competition closer to a monopoly or perfect competition? Good question, it's kind of subjective, depends on who you ask. Personally, I would say that monopolistic competition is a lot closer to perfect competition, the competition part of it specifically, being that there's no barriers to entry, anyone can sort of come in and take away your you know, profits and you'll have zero profits in the long run, that's the same for both of those. The one thing that monopolistic competition has, you know, in common with monopolies is just the fact that they have a little bit of market power. They're, they're not price takers. They can set their price a little bit, but in the long run, none of that kind of matters and you still have zero profits anyways. And finally, another question. If monopolistic and perfect competition both make zero profits in the long run, why is there a deadweight loss for one but not the other? So deadweight loss basically comes from the fact that, you know, if you're not making the best quantity that you can to make sure that the consumer and producer surplus totally for everyone is maximized. You know, if you're not doing that, then you're at, at a deadweight loss. So long story short, even though you have zero profits in either case, the monopolistically competitive firms in the long run will still make a lower combined quantity than perfect competition will. So that's why there's still a deadweight loss because you're not making the right quantity even though you have zero profits and that's why there's a deadweight loss for monopolistic competition but not for perfect competition. Well, I hope you now understand economics better and if you really want to make sure you've mastered the concept, check out our active learning customized platform at besteconTutor.com. It's like having a one-on-one -on -one tutor right in front of you 24-7. You can click here to try it out for free. And we'll be adding more topics and videos on YouTube, so make sure you subscribe below for the latest updates.